the proposition that the marriage had weighed heavily on Lord Kevin's mind. Lord Tybalt's personality clearly did not mesh well with Lord Kevin's own. He was a glutton and a selfish man, and though Kevin had an ego and greed all of his own, his greed was for power, not for such filth as food and women. But the prospect was intriguing, not only to learn more of his father, but because Lord Krakor was a rich house, with a large enough force to keep House Crate secure. And so, as his boy turned 12, he could no longer put off answering the question. He remained hesitant and somewhat unwilling in his mind, but saw no reason to refuse what was, in truth, a reasonable offer. The proposal was met, and the two drank to each other's honour, as Lord Krakel's granddaughter and Lord Kevin's son would be joined together, and their houses would form an alliance of sorts. It was after the drinks that, finally, Lord Tybalt spoke to Lord Kevin, to tell him what he had promised, to tell him of what Lord Krakel before him had known. It wasn't much in truth. Most of the money which had been moved at the time of his father's death came from the north of the Westerlands, mainly in squashing peasant rabbles and in a major wedding which occurred in the crag between Lord Westerling's daughter and a local noble. Fair Isle, though, had less explainable expenditures. Having loaned a lot of money from nearby lords and even a sum from Lord Tywin, they see then seemed to pay it all back, paying it back to creditors in only a year. Strange matter, sure. Curious, though, Lord Kevin wouldn't expect a killer to take out such clear and traceable loans, unless they were a moron. The Golden Tooth had loaned plenty of gold at that time too, though Kevin couldn't seem to pick up much about the lord of the place. He seemed an orderly man, one who kept himself focused. If he could find out who Lord Leo Leffords had loaned his gold to, Kevin would have a clear path to pursue. After that, the proposal was set in stone and Lord Kevin began to travel home, back towards Serpent Hall, a look upon his face of regret, of worry, but also of resolve. For the first time in years, he had a path forward. Hello everybody, and welcome back to Crusader Kings 2, A Game of Thrones, where I want to, before I get into role play in the games today i want to quickly go over this may be a shorter bit episode just because i'm a bit tired this week of having to deal with crusader kings 3 a game of thrones um i won't pretend this is the first time i've recorded this episode i won't pretend it's the second time i've recorded this episode let's just say it's i've recorded this a number of times that sounds like dive <laughs> um it has not been enjoyable i've had to fix a lot of and i guarantee it's going to happen again if it happens again i'm just going to deal with it but the artifact claymore keeps happening it's happened about six times sometimes it fundamentally breaks the game sometimes the houses just don't re-dissolve back into the iron throne most of it being caused by uh this war of snow which is a war that's basically already won but because of the requirements of sieging down certain stuff and the fact that Edit is just going to keep his entire army over here. The whole war. Essentially, it's never going to end. And it's just going to starve out Stannis' army. And when it starves out his army, Tywin decides, oh, well, I can go win there. And then another war happens, and another war, and another war, and another war. And it gets um, incredibly tiring, I think is the fair way to say it. With that done, let's get into what we now know. Uh, we have agreed to the terms with Craig Call to marry Taisha the grander daughter to our eldest or our second oldest uh, Lord Kevin and as such we've learned that essentially all the signs are pointing to the northern region here uh, from what we can tell lots of weddings small revolts happening up in this region all of which had the sort of financial goings on and movings around to perhaps mask a payment to a killer in that sort of way and we can't be too angry this is the first time we've actually had any sort of lead and we already were sort of looking in this region with with us trying to gain some secrets in fair isle but it's still not definitive and it's not what we were hoping for we have been for something more definitive but i still think this is pushing us in the right direction here so fair isle crag Withermore, 
Gold March, Ashmark, all the good places to start in. But who knows, it could be that all of this is a red herring. Nonetheless, it's somewhere to start. So let's find some secrets in the crag. As we're still doing, yeah, we're still doing our hook on Lord uh, Sebastian there. Which hopefully will get us some information we need. Everybody's off at this grand tournament up in the Bane Fort, though, so. I've seen that we, people saying that we should give land to Sir Philip here, which I agree with. And the way we're going to do it is by, we're going to forcefully take this land, and then we're going to give him Clever Cove. Let's see if he's going to do it willingly, or if I need to get my armies ready. Um, let's... Well, and then is a pretty good trait, usually, because of the prestige. So we'll go for that one. Okay, he, he has indeed stepped down. So we're going to keep direct control of this. We'll need to get extra control here, but we'll keep direct control of this as it's the duchy title. And then Clever Keep, I'm going to give to Philip. I had another in, another comment, or maybe the same comment, which suggested about renaming the, the Kinlands to the Slivering Shore, which is a name I like. Slivering Shore. Because it does look a little bit like a snake going up and down, up and down like that. Oh! My daughter Taisha has brought me a gemstone. It's quite rough, but upon closer inspection, it is a deeply red, brilliant hue contained within. I can't equip it though, I've got all of my, my fangs. <laughs> is it better than the wolf's fangs? It's an extra learning, but it gives less prestige. I'll keep it for the learning, and because it's a gift from my daughter. You know, it's easy, easy. There's a heart underneath this um, 27 intrigue exterior. Oh, come on. Okay, I was saying we've been discovered and it's still 90%. So we'll <laughs> see how that goes. Your new chancellor. Um, oh, he's a very good steward. Okay, I'll make him a steward then. He's probably a better steward than my. Um, Kevin here. Well, he definitely is. Let's do a late switch to... Oh, no, I can't switch him, because it's only really been changed. But I st he's probably not going to end up with a good stewardship stat, unfortunately. But he is definitely going to end up as a great, great diplomat. Just look at those diplomatic stats. So it's going to be interesting, because we're going to have a bit of a pivot in our... Um... My next hunt will not cost any gold. We're going to do that one. And we're immediately going to do a hunt. Uh, where is best? Seems like Ekadine's pretty good. Um, as would Springs instead be. We're going to do it here because we have the hunting rounds. I'm going to need a new caravan master. Uh, for now we'll travel without a caravan master because it's inside my own lands. But let's do the event to search for one. get a weak hook on Lords Sebastian but it would cost me I cannot fabricate hooks on him opinion and interim service I'm still gonna do it because I want to know what he knows about whatever happened up here in the north I will pick the one who's good it's nobody coming I, oh it's probably because I've kicked everybody out of my region <laughs> like all of my vassals and stuff, and it's only my own sons now. They're probably not huge fans of me anymore. So it's just me. See if I can get a wolf. 
Despite so many invitations, not a single person showed up to my hunt. Perhaps the road to Springstead is filled with more danger than I anticipated. Suppose it's time to begin my journey back. Uh, yeah, I guess the hunt's just cancelled if no one shows up. Disappointing. Let's pay some homage to uh, Tywin. He's an old man, so... Give him a small favour. Who knows if he's even going to use it with how old he is. <laughs> like, he's gonna, probably going to pass away sooner rather than later at that age. Is there anything that's petitioning from him? He's not going to give me development. They never, ever, ever give development. So there's almost no worth in trying that one. Great if I could vassalize you, but I don't think I can because I wouldn't be your rightful. No, yeah, you're part of Tarek, and there's no way I could get like to get control of Tarek. I'd need Midvale as well. I mean, I could get if I got this, this, and then seven points. Like the the largest, my maximum limits I would set for myself would be Tarek and um, Fair Isle. These two would both like. Because that region is as big as I want to get. When I am, if I we do ever reach the point I become Lord Paramount, that's when I'd start looking at stuff like Castamere. But for now, I just want to remain in this region. And we'll soon we'll have a claim on that county. It might be worth just petitioning to see if he would maybe pay for a temple. Because I have space for one. And they are very good cash if I don't have to pay for it. Um... Well, turn to for a moment. John, I require your counsel on the matter. The noble born chancellor steps forward eagerly, catching his scrolls. Yes, a most delicate affair, my lord. Eric, the Lord Septon, watches quietly from the sidelines. No one could question an argument left unrefuted by him. Having said that, Gareth always liked me. Perhaps he would make my case. The Lord turns back to me, his attention already moving elsewhere. I need to do something. Am I not on his counsel? I'm definitely on his counsel, right? Yeah, I think, I'm pretty sure I'm a steward. Apparently he doesn't want to listen to me. 45%. Yeah, Gareth has no chance, so it's either 40 or take the 45. Oh, it worked. Wow, we're actually going to get some um, a temple paid for. Where's it being built? A new perk. Let's um, let's do tax man. Then we'll do work professional workforce next. You can get a hook on Tywin because I believe Tywin's increased. We'll take the weak hook because I think I need to modify my contract with him because he has switched things up. So I need war declaration because he's increased the um. What's it called? The thing I just did, the um, Brown Authority. Yes, yeah, level four. It's absolute. So if I wanted, once I get this claim, I would have had to had a hook on him to even do the war. But luckily, because I have. That's one bit. Oh my. He's in a wardrobe in the servants' quarters. Lustful or chaste? I mean, will it be lustful? <laughs> Why not? Why not, you know? All geniuses have their faults. Does he like me yet? Okay, he's close to liking me. He basically will form. Um, eventually, could that branch? I imagine because he is unable to inherit House Crate, unless he does stick. I have seen that they have stuck before. It's usually only bastards who are like guaranteed to form a cadet branch, but there's still a good chance of of ignored sons. Um, their discussion relates to Lord Philip. Let's learn what they're speaking of. 
They're discussing his private life in some unsavory habit of his. He's a non-believer. Whoa, 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 when did this... So he, he's not really a member of the Faith of the Seven? That's... something. Let's get a claim on Barline. And let's station men at arms in the feast fires. Interesting. Maybe there was a good reason for me, uh, this isn't hurting him after all, even if I didn't realize it. Ooh, pretty decent. It don't have to be 100 man, I'd rather get the tax level increase. Make me, him hate me a bit, but I'm already trying to sway him, so it's fine. Let's push and get ourselves some nice looking borders here. Don't need any allies, I can handle these guys by myself. Yeah, they just stand a single chance there. Eh? They actually have the advantage, but still not going to be enough. During my afternoon stroll, my daughter Taisha runs up to me. Father, they started swinging at one another. She's about to buy a high low pit treat, turning our attention to a fight down the street. The companions appear to be a couple of pages from my court. It would her uh, education focus, which is diplomacy. Uh, let's see if let's let Taisha see if she can handle it. Be good for her to learn that some people are just absolute morons. Yeah, well, let's move and see if I can get some more hooks. See if I can get a hook on. Um, go for this one. Fabricate a clock on with a more. Uh, 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 fabric uh, fabricate a hook on with a more and see what we can get from that. Are we able to fabricate another on? No, I can't use it again on Tywin. Oh dear, Sarissa. Uh Try some more drastic measures. Oh, it cost her an eye. But it was a successful treatment. Even if it still lists her as having cancer. Poor Sarissa. Oof. There's a rock slide in my capital. Art oh, development growth. Damn. That's an annoying one, because there's only 12 development there. Still one of my higher developments, but still. What is Castle Rock's development? 18. The townsfolk sing my praises. Oh, and it immediately gets rid of rock slide damage. Whee! They love me because I paid money to save their lives. I did the bare minimum, and I get... Always for it. Truly, House Crate is just the greatest of all time. On who? Lady Taisha. Is that his wife? It is his wife, but it would cost 80. No. I don't want to push that one. I'd rather sit on it and see if I can get one for way, way cheaper than 80 gold for the Duchess's hook. Because she may tell me what he knows, but it looks like, she, yeah, she's his second wife. So she may not even know what happened at the time. <laughs> I want someone to be if I could demand another hostage. That'd be funny. Okay, with Vickery taken. 
most people I could give it to. Do I? What's hap what ha uh, happens to Tarek now? That's what I want to know. Spelling it wrong. Oh, maybe I'm just dumb. Would they be Vickery? They would be Vickery. Not Vineman. <laughs> Find me the Vineman. Let's give you back your land. If you come to my court, you shall be given back land. There we go, you can keep your titles. Just be loyal. A memory of what? A memory of Owen. Am I getting an artifact about a memory of the real me? Is that the twist of the game? We were tracking who you really were, so we could write a document about it. And I see me in the, uh, the Owen I was torturing in my dungeon. Oh, I should probably let you go. Right? No? I guess that's because he doesn't have 10 gold. Alright, I'll let you go. I'll have a look at this in a sec, because that seems interesting. See if this in. It's probably it will only be ransom for hooks, right? Yeah, okay. Steph and my admiral frets all through the day, evidently attempting to find the right words. At last, he makes his way to dine. I leech, I hear rumor, rumors that Tywin, the lord of the Westlands, has come to see you as the focus of his enmity. He talks openly about the illegitimate lord of Serpentine who daily usurps his rightful lands and revenues. Really? With that opinion? There's a hundred percent chance he ignores my letter. Well, this one either becomes my... Hmm. Damn, Tywin's gonna become my rival? Lord Tywin was bluffing. I thought... Okay. I got the only... The, the one rare chance where it wasn't him, which is what I wanted. That's good, at least. Um, use a hook on here. My wife is pregnant once more. I'm happy we didn't become rivals. That would have been very, very awkward after everything we've been through. Um, may make sense. You never know with Tywin. Can't cross out completely that me. He may have had something to do with it all. He's nearing a range now. I think his partner's younger than him, right? Yeah, by a year. So still a little while until he gets married. What, what do you mean? Is it a memory of the actual me? What is this thing? I'm going to use it because I'm, I'm confused now. He's a fortune builder. What level is that? Oh, level three. Not bad, actually, all things considered. Although he could be a better fighter. And that is an interesting trait to have. Anyway, so 22 diplomacy, decent marshal, 18 stewardship, decent intrigue, and decent... Well, and actually, very good learning, 17 learning. Wow, ah, no trait below 13. Gonna be very interesting when we get to play as him. Actually, better martially minded than Kevin is. And well, only slightly better diplomatically. Definitely not better intrigue or stewardship wise. Although a lot of that is um like the stewardship's all intricate web weaver. Hmm. Yes, we'll get you on intrigue. A person with one eye is always one that you'd expect to be on an intrigue focus anyway. 
we can get my son Kevin as my Chancellor. He has a child? Damn, my sub didn't be getting freaky. Oh, literally while I was going from one to the other, Lord, uh, what's his name? Lord Gowan the Dull died, probably taking the information he knew with him. He got a bit out of him, but not enough to make anything out of it. Damn. Bethany. Ugh. That's the problem. The longer we've taken to pursue this, the less and less time we've had to actually understand what we're pursuing. Lord Willem of Goldmarch maybe may know something. Let's see if we can get a hook on him. But we're running out of information. We're running out of time. Um, I, you may be my son, I'm still better than you. So I think he likes me now, right? Yeah, he's, he's... Interest, what, what is this? As I'm reading my the latest missives from around the realm, I cast my mind to its origins. The conquest of the Seven Kingdoms remains one of the greatest feats achieved within one lifespan. I cannot help but ponder the impact of Aegon's conquest on the realm. The legacy of the Targaryen dynasty is undeniable, and its foundations were drawn from that one man's actions. A part of me acknowledges the benefits that have come with Targaryen rule. Stability, centralized power, and a protection of the dragons are not things to be taken lightly. We also wonder what would have, have happened if Aegon not crossed from Dragonstone. Would Westeros still be divided at this day? Would a Westerosi broken the stalemate? Could peace have been ach uh, achieved without blood and fire? The legacy of the Congress will be debated for centuries to come. It is for me to decide what I can take away from it. This one giving you stress is interesting. I wonder if it leads to something. I'm going to pick that one. He wants a council position, but then maybe he should not be shit at everything. Who's his heir? Why is his, his first heir immediately loses the famous red hair? How on earth has that happened? Oh. Why does this happen with all of you? Both of my children have said it now. Is this is this a thing from the that kids DLC or or is this something new? Because this is annoying. I can't stand it. My betrothed will not find satisfaction with a man like me. Please, father, don't make me do this. Ugh, but it'll break my alliance with Great Hall. I mean, I've got so much information out of him that if I turn my back on him, then I don't see it going well for me. But once I'm actually going to agree, we're going to break to betrothal. Going to find you someone new. You're 16 now. Make Lord Craigwall angry, but Lord Craigwall isn't exactly the kind of man I would see sticking with me to my last day. It makes any sense? Is it Tali's? But they're too young. Not the best options out here. I mean, she would guarantee genius from, like, a mechanic standpoint, but I don't really like using mechanics in my book. And the Golden Tooth would be good, but the problem is her age. Yeah, you'd be, you'd be 20... You'd be 26 by when they get married. Not great. Let's go back to relevance. I will have a look and see. Just who has imperitable traits, just to see. Yeah, not great options. I could marry some lowborn for it, but holy crap, she's an incredible lowborn. But she's already pregnant. Wow. That would be a scandal and a half. That would get him disinherited. <laughs> like, wow. Yeah, it's probably not going to be somewhere of a trait then. Let's just see if we can get somebody who's at least close. Dark Carrows in the Stormlands. 
the veil, there are fake house. As Graves is in the reach. And then Whisper Points also in the reach. Again, not incredible options here. You'll say, let's see if there's any Lannisters, but that's not going to be a great option. What about Sterling? Yeah, she's betrothed. She wouldn't have been bad, actually, but she's betrothed. No one in our Swift. He's not married yet. Could we... Perhaps have a wedding here. Good one. If he also refuses this one, I will be so mad at him. And there goes our alliance with Frankel. Who? Oh, it's on the Stepstones. I know there's guarantee you people are going to travel all the way to the Stepstones for that. It's just bound to happen. I'm gonna unpin you now. Father, you cared for me like the hound minds its pups. Better even. My earliest fondest memories were with you. And I've pl placed my first fallen tooth in your hand. You held me so close. He blushes, beaming. I'll pass the loving care on to my children. Oh, that's wonderful. It's not really true, but that's wonderful. Maybe these last like six years, the last couple years where he's been um, landed in a realm, has made him forget all the horrid things that happened when he was a kid, and how I never saw him as my own son. In a way, I like to think it's it's almost logical. Not from the standpoint that I I do think he is Kevin's son. I think he's fully Kevin's blood. But I think when Kevin looks at him, he sees his first wife, and that's not a thought he enjoys. I mean, she died very, very young. And they were both young, they had a strong connection to each other. And he's a, he's a memory of that. Whereas, obviously, whereas Eliana passed on, Adriana's still here. Let's get some control in case. Uh, Taisha could be Shy, Paranoid or Craven. Why would you want Paranoid or Craven over Shy? The only one that's even somewhat makes sense is Paranoid because of the Intrigue bonus. But even then, I just... Obviously, Shy is not great. Craven's awful. We'll go with Shy. Of the three bad options, it's not the worst. A Hunt? Sure. My newest vassal. He's going after a fox. Very well. I shall show you a true huntsman at work. I am a master huntsman. Is it? There we go, Hunter Trait. Surprised I've not got level 2 Venator yet. Still only a level uh, rank 1 Venator. Still better than him. <laughs> he lost the. He, he lost the. Wow. Am I the only one who knows how to hunt here? Wow. That is something. A fire in the forest. Goodness. So Stafford Chancewell, a knight, is uh, caught in a fire. Wow. Okay. So I could call on Hugh to save him, which Hugh has basically no chance of saving him. 
Tibbet has a decent chance of saving him. And no chance of dying, at least. We'll go with Tibbet then. Tibbet got injured from doing it, but Stafford chants well. Let's save. Can I check his... Oh, he's, he's still 25 prowess. He's not bad. I just wanted to check. Let's see if he could squire someone for me, but no, he cannot. Ooh, development cap in the round capital. Yes, yes, yes. Because that would be Serpent Hall. A grand tour. Oh. A majesty tour or a taxation tour. I want to do a majesty tour. Oh, I could only visit Vickery. Then it's not worth it then. Will I be able to do more? But I guess that's for when you're a bigger lord. Ooh. House of Warriors. Or holding taxes plus ten. Oof, they're both very good. I well, also obviously noble veins is good. I think I want to go for gold and stool first, and we go into well uh, warfare a bit. Just get some of the Westerman dynasty and. Uh, we shall call it there, and we shall take a look at the information we've gathered, and uh, I'll present it to you uh, in this little bit at the end of the video here. I'll present to you what we learn from the hooks and secrets we got this episode, and from there I will posit to you, where do we take it next? And that's for you guys to decide. Uh, in the comments down below, with the information we've gathered, leave your clues, your deductions, and uh, from there, we'll figure out the next step. So yeah, please do uh, leave a comment with your thoughts about who could be behind everything, what's going on, and uh, let's take a look at all that evidence. But from me in present time, because me in the future will be doing that for you, <laughs> from me in present time, I hope you guys have enjoyed this episode. And I shall see you next week. Now, let's get to some deductions. It seemed that no matter where Lord Kevin pushed buttons or twisted his knife for information, there was nothing he could get, no true information he could learn. He began to worry this information was nothing, that it was all just stories and misdirections. That was until he was able to get his hooks into the Lord of Fair Isle, able to push him for what he knew and learning that, in fact, he knew quite a lot. For weeks, Lord Kevin had been planting more and more little birds into the court of Fair Isle, each listening and pressing where they could, to pick up anything that could be useful against the Lord, or anything that would aid Lord Kevin in other matters. And it was from those little birds that Kevin received the first bit of useful information in quite some time. He learned that, indeed, his father had taken out work for Lord Tywin in the northern parts of the Westerlands, seemingly on work from the Lannisters, though he would never answer when pressed upon what that work specifically was. Surprisingly, though, the work was not undertaken long before the assassination, but only a month beforehand, while Tywin and his army were marching towards King's Landing. The Lord called his father disruptive, rude, and a man who believed himself far above his position, and seemed to talk with disdain at times. Kevin was stunned with what you could learn from little birds like this. All sorts of information he'd never learned face to face. He learned his father directly spoke with Lord Sebastian's father, Gareth, about a repayment and a duty all lords must owe. Though the Lord would never confirm if his father paid this so-called repayment, and the time Lord Sebastian already served as his father's chief advisor, making him perfect to speak to. With a few hooks in him, he would surely return and ask a couple more pressing questions. Elsewhere, the funeral of Lord Westling of the Crag was in some ways a boon and in other ways a blockage in his way. Lord Gowan had been alive at the time of the murder, and was the Lord of the Crag, meaning most likely his father also spoke with him. 
The boon came from the people who were at the funeral being so open, telling stories of his life, of his friends. And thanks to some more birds and his own attendants, Lord Kevin learned a much. He learns that his father was working for the Lannisters, but not for a Lannister directly. Someone had ordered him on the house's behalf. He also learned his father did not visit the crag at any time, surprisingly, and instead he marched straight towards the Golden Tooth. To Kevin's mind, though, that would make no sense. If he was heading towards the Golden Tooth at that supposed time, he wouldn't have been able to then head back to Lannisport on the day he was killed. Something didn't add up, but it was all the information he could gather. If his father had ever met with Lord Gowan at another time, it was too late to ask, as that body was soon laid deep beneath the ground. There was some hope that perhaps Lord Reynolds may know something of his father, but the man seemed quite elusive. Kevin didn't have enough, but he had something. A sliver of hope. Elsewhere, more lords had passed away, Lord Leo Lefford among them. While he could not get information out of the now deceased lord, he could surely gather information from his books. He should make a visit soon to meet with that new young Lord of the Tooth, Lord Roger. Perhaps the boy was too inexperienced to realise how dangerous it would be to let Lord Kevin look through those records. There was one final piece of information Lord Kevin could learn. This one coming from a strange knight who came upon his door, an elderly hedge knight seeking a place to rest. Kevin granted him as such, only for a few nights, but on one such night she mentioned the sack of King's Landing. He had been there, serving the Mad King as a paid knight. He had not seen Lord Kevin at any time, but he claims to have been lookout, watching over the Lannister camps for the few days they waited outside, and told the tale that one night, at the stroke of midnight, four men on horseback rode to Lannister tents, messengers it seems, before riding out the same night, intentionally taking routes that not even their own men would spot. Perhaps it was nothing, perhaps it was unrelated, or well, perhaps Lord Kevin could no longer rule out people who were at the siege of King's Landing from being out of the plot. Perhaps, once more, everyone was a suspect.